Dearest gentle viewer, it has come to my attention that the dazzling Regency-inspired dresses from the beloved Bridgerton series have sparked a newfound fascination with this elegant era. The allure of these timeless garments is undeniable, even to the most discerning eye. In the spirit of creativity and innovation, I have embarked on a delightful endeavor to fashion an entire Regency gown, but with my own unique twist. Instead of silk and satin, I shall employ the humble knitting needle and yarn. Will I succeed in crafting a knitted masterpiece worthy of a Bridgerton ball? Stay tuned, dear viewers, as this intriguing endeavor unfolds. Yours sincerely, Lady Knitzeldown. While I've always had an interest in Regency fashion because of Jane Austen, the Bridgerton series and their interpretation of Regency fashion, I think has really brought that back into the forefront of maybe a little bit more popular culture. Though I always, like I said, like to put my own twist on this kind of fashion because I like to focus on the knitted, crocheted, kind of handicraft work. Now, while it might be easy to find some patterns for stockings or purses from the Regency era, it's a little bit more difficult to find pen knitting patterns for garment pieces which is why I've decided to go look at some museum archives to see if we could fill in the gaps. I realized that looking for historical accuracy when kind of considering Regency fashion from a Bridgerton lens seems a little bit hypocritical is not the right word, because Bridgerton just draws on the Regency era for inspiration in a fun way. I mean, it's a fantasy world, so I think the fashion is fun. So it might seem a little like, why are we looking at it? But it's just, I want to see how probable it is and how out there my idea might be to make a Regency knit dress. And surprise, surprise, or maybe not very surprising, we do have two examples of knit Regency dresses. The first one is from Denmark. It is knit in a beautiful orange wool. It is hand knit, which is so impressive to me. There are a few things about it that really stand out. So you can see that the bottom has kind of like a chevron almost, diagonal pointed arrow kind of design. And the top bit of it is a little bit more of like an open lace work. The museum listing itself calls it azure. I think that's how you would pronounce it. And basically, I think that means kind of new, but from the history that I could look up, that was a term at the time that meant lace work or open work, so open work designs. But this also kind of reminds me a lot of a lot of Regency fashion plates that I've seen where you're wearing like a very gauzy, almost net-like material over the base of your dress. This kind of reminds me of kind of like that gauzy material. Am I going to hand knit an entire dress like this? I don't think I have the patience or stamina for that, which is why I also got really, really excited when I found this this particular knit Regency dress from the V&A. This one is machine knit. As the pictures uh, from the V&A of this particular dress are not in the public domain, I can't share it with you here in this video, but I'll leave a link in the description below to that piece in the collection so you can take a look. It's really beautiful. Instead, you'll have to contend with this really, really terrible hand sketch recreation of the knit dress. It's gorgeous. It's knit lace over a golden silk. But yeah, this is kind of what I'm referring to to give you an idea. Look at the link for the original. It's much more beautiful, of course. And if you know anything about me, I love my knitting machine. I have a few knitting machines, uh, antique circular ones, vintage flat knitting ones, but this particular knit dress is something called warp knitting. Warp and weft knitting are slightly different. Weft knitting is similar to the kind of fabric and material that you would get and the kind of same knitting style that you would get if you're working on a knitting loom or if you're hand knitting. Versus warp knitting has a slightly different structure to the fabric. Would be interesting if I could create it, but I don't have anything that can create it, so I'm gonna do an adaptation. I'm gonna use my own knitting machine, which is a weft knitting machine, to create some fabric for this. Now this dress, in my opinion, leans a little bit more evening slash ball dress. We don't have any trains that we can trip over. We have a lower neckline and we have shorter sleeves. It's also a beige light off-white color, which reminds me again, a lot of that like gauzy overlayer or like netted overlayer that you would wear to some of the evening ensembles that I see in fashion play. This is the dress that I want to recreate very, very much with my own knitting machine. You might be wondering, this is the Regency era. They're using machines, knitting machines to do this. Yes, knitting machines have been around for a long time, since the 1500s. Stockings were the first things that were made on knitting machines. I'm gonna be using a different knitting machine than you've seen me use in the past. And this one is newly acquired, but previously loved pretty heavily. So it needs a little bit of work. So this is the first step of this entire process. Let's go over to my knitting machine and see what we can get to work on that to see even where we should start on designing this knitted Regency dress. 
Dearest gentle viewers, it has come to this author's attention that many of us, whilst engaged in our projects, find ourselves burdened with countless open tabs, slowing down our computers, and causing us to lose track of our endeavors. Fear not, for I've discovered a marvelous solution, the sponsor of today's video, Notion. And yes, I have gotten, unfortunately, incredibly sick, so I'm going to sound a little bit nasally for the rest of this. <laughs> Apologies ahead of time. Now, I have been using Notion for over four years at this point, especially when I am planning my larger knitting projects. I began by creating a new page for this project using the simplified page creation, which is front and center, really easy to use. I had done some Pinterest boards where I put together the original Regency historical examples of the dresses that I wanted to be inspired by. So I embedded those boards directly into Notion. And this way I could keep all of my ideas in one place and organized well. As I'm not going for 100% historical accuracy, I actually want to take in inspiration from the Bridgerton style gowns. And so I took some image stills from the show from the dresses that I really liked and I used the built-in cropping tool that Notion has in order to focus it directly on the piece or pieces bits of style that I really wanted to use. It also kind of put together a bit of a list of the things that I liked about each of the different looks that I was going for, but sometimes it's a little hard for me to kind of come to an agreement in my own mind with all these different inspiration sources which is where it became fun to use Notion AI to kind of bring some of these ideas to life, where I asked it to summarize both the Pinterest board that I had put in place, the different images from Bridgerton, as well as kind of the main focus points that I had put in place for myself to put together a few design ideas for how this finished dress could look like. After choosing one of the designs, which I will expand on a little bit later in this video, I am now down to breaking out the tasks that I need to do in order to finish this project. And I like to put them on a calendar to give myself a little bit of an idea of how long it might take me to finish this project. So that's how I've used it for this particular instance. I don't just use it for planning videos. I also have a lot of ideas for different projects coming up in there. I have ideas for different knitting designs and crocheting, other things to try out. I organize my personal life in there as well. So if you're going from research and design to project planning and execution, Notion keeps everything together in one place so you don't have to juggle multiple tabs, which is what I did a lot before Notion. So whether you're a knitter, a crafter, a cosplayer, a researcher, Notion supports every dream. If you can think it, you can make it happen with Notion. Try Notion for free at notion.com slash engineering knits. Thank you again so much to Notion for sponsoring today's video and making videos like this even possible for me. So let's keep going as we continue working on this Regency inspired knit dress. So this is my new to me brother knitting machine. It is a brother KH881, which means somehow before it got to me, it originated in Japan. Apparently it's supposed to be one of the best punch card reading machines that brothers ever made. And brother already has a great reputation for knitting machines. So I really crossing my fingers that this is gonna work because I need the punch card to work for my lace. I think it's been worked a little hard and potentially a set in storage for a while because it is in need of some cleanup. So before we get to trying to make much of anything on this machine, I think it's time to give it a good cleaning. Oh my goodness, that took a while. So I had to change out all 200 needles because I don't know if you can see, it might be a little hard to tell, but all the ones that were in the machine were fully rusted out. So these joints need to operate super smoothly and most of them were fully rusted. So all 200 needles have been replaced. I'm just missing two things in order to fix this restoration. The first is this machine was missing the clamps. When you're using a knitting machine, it is pretty physical and there is some resistance. So if I were to do this without securing this to this table, it would just fly off the end the moment when I try to push the carriage across, crush, <laughs> carriage across. <laughs> so I ordered some new clamps and they fit and it's great. Um, but I didn't realize there's only one. So I need the other one. It needs really two clamps to hold it down. And then the other thing is, this is the sponge bar for the machine. This kind of acts as a spring for the way that the needles work and the action of the needles when they're in the machine. So that top bit is kind of what the sponge should look like. I mean, it is literally a piece of foam kind of sponge material that's on here. And do you see how flat it's been pressed after decades of use? 
The first thing that you usually have to do when you get a vintage knitting machine is you have to replace or rebuild the sponge bar. Depending on your machine, you might not be able to get a replacement. You might have to rebuild it. And I could have sworn that I had the materials to rebuild the sponge bar and I just can't find it. So I'm gonna have to see if I can get that ordered in a reasonable amount of time as well. So we're almost there, but we're not there yet. We can't knit with it like this without the sponge bar um, really being the spring that holds it in place. So I guess I will see you really soon again, probably in a few days time when all all the stuff arrives and we can finish this machine restoration and we can test out some lace patterns. I'm excited. I need to vacuum up the absolute mess that's at my feet, but the sponge bar is rebuilt and we can put this in position, which by the way, yeah, look at the thickness of that. That's just really nice. You have to push down on the needles as you're putting it into your machine. Oh, this last bit. Oh, there we go. That's in place. Oh, wow. With the new needles and a new sponge bar. It's just perfect. Like it just sounds right. We definitely need to anchor this though to the table. This table though I think it might be slightly too thick so I'm gonna have to see if there's something else that I can clamp this knitting machine to. And the next thing that I want to do is practice plain knitting. I've never operated a brother before so this machine type is new to me. Let's go find a new spot to clamp this to and I'll clean up the absolute mess I just made. It's a few days later. I have moved the knitting machine to a different table, ones that the clamps would fit on. Also, I am wearing my really comfortable shark wearable blanket and I'm looking a little tired today maybe because we spent most of the night in the ER. Don't worry, everyone's fine, everything's fine. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Today, the first thing that I wanted to do was practice a little bit the plain knitting setup because I have never used this knitting machine before and it's similar to my other ones, but it definitely, I looked at the instructions, it operates slightly differently. So I want to get used to that first before I start doing anything more complicated like lace patterns. And I want to make sure I understand all the buttons so I don't accidentally do something that could break it. This is my first time casting on with this type of cast on comb. So we had a little bit of a hiccup at the beginning, but I think I figured it out and it looks lovely. This knitting machine runs so smoothly so far in the plain knitting. I think between the new needles and the new sponge bar, it makes it so much smoother than the other one that I have at home. I never want to be overly optimistic, but with how lovely this has run so far in plain knitting, I'm going to try to switch to lace knitting. I have high hopes and I'm trying not to get let them run away from me. This is a beauty with how smoothly it runs. Cross your fingers for me that the lace operation works, let's say works, and I can figure it out. Okay, there is a slight problem with the pattern reading mechanism and the timing belt of the pattern re reading mechanism. This is completely different to how my Singer machine does lace knitting. Like I'm, I've never used two carriages at the same time. I've never used a timing belt before, but this is why YouTube is amazing because I found a video from the Answer Nady Lit, Answer Nady, Answer Lady Knits. She and her husband describe something that is almost exactly the same issue as what I'm having here, where the pattern mechanism advances multiple times in one row, and it's an issue with the clutch. So I'm gonna take the top off of the lace pattern punch card reading thing and see if I have the same issue. Fingers crossed that it's the same issue because they have a detailed step-by-step -step tutorial on how to fix it. So let's see what we can get done. Boy, that's dirty. Okay, let me go grab the vacuum cleaner first and let's let's clean this out. This is a mess. Yep, that should not be happening when it does that. 
that should not be happening. It should stop. In case you're interested, yeah, you see how this guy is being pushed out of the way? That shouldn't be happening. It should be sitting all the way down here. And then when I hold it in place, yep, you see that? That's operating properly. I think this guy is bent out of shape. This is that piece that's off the machine. It looks like a 90 degree angle, but there's a slight, it's so slight, but there is a slight tilt upwards to it. There's a groove worn into this plate from the thing going underneath it. And the longer that that's allowed to happen, the deeper it'll go and the more that that will continue to happen. So I'm gonna see if I can bend it more acute and then put it back in place to the point where it'll finally catch that clutch rather than letting it spin around underneath it. Okay, I've screwed this now in place. Let's see. Ooh, it struggles in this direction. Okay, that one works fine. I think it's something else besides that I'm like what is getting something's getting stuck what's getting stuck i haven't really been able to find an answer as to why in one direction it's easier than the other basically the answer is i should probably have a look at the underside but i don't really want to do that at this moment so what i'm wondering is if i should just operate the machine with this cover off so that when i'm going in the direction that causes me problems i can give that extra support the piece that needs support because it works when it has the proper support it's a little strange but if it works it works i guess My goodness you guys i got the lace pattern to work it might be a little hard to see because of the very strong pattern in the background that this is hanging in front of but it's absolutely beautiful i am so happy i can't tell you how happy i am i've tried so hard on my other machine to make lace work and there's been so many issues this one isn't a walk in the park either but i found a workaround that i think actually works it's gorgeous so i'm gonna try a different lace pattern and see what that one looks like i'm just i can't tell you how happy i am this is so exciting Now that my test piece is off of the knitting machine, you can see there are four different types of lace that I can make based on the four punch cards that came with the machine. The first one that I made down here, which has kind of these interesting columns and diagonal lines. This reminds me the most of the original pattern that I'm trying to copy. This is another really beautiful design, but reminds me more of like the tops of some stockings that I've seen. I like this open work pattern, I think for the sleeves. This is the fourth pattern, also very pretty, but I think it's a little too much solid among the lace work I want mine to be a little bit more open so at the end again I have decided to do this for the body or the skirt of the dress and then this open work for kind of the top of the dress the bodice and the sleeves I am doing it in knit picks alpaca cloud lace weight yarn in the color Sophie so this is the test piece that I made in that yarn just to test out exactly what weight I needed to do if there's any changes that I need to make in order to make it work with this particular yarn there were some changes I needed and now I want to kind of take together the inspiration some of the fashion plates and what I saw in Bridgerton and create a dress design out of that the top layer is going to be that machine lace that I'm going to make with the combination of the very open holes and kind of more of the, the columns of lace pattern design between the skirts and the bodice and sleeves that's going to go over a slip that's going to be in a deep blue color I love the color blue and you can kind of see what that looks like when I'm holding it over my little wearable blanket to see how that overlay is. In the Regency period the hems especially 
especially when you're going for a ball, are not all the way to the ground. Seeing an ankle was not that scandalous at the time. Also towards 1815, if you look at a lot of the fashion plates, the gauzy layer is shorter than the dress or little slip that you're wearing it over, but I've decided to make them both about the same length. It's a little bit more of what Bridgerton does and it's personally the style that I'd like to go for, so the skirt length is going to be the same. That is going to be the design of my Bridgerton inspired knitted Regency gown. I'm really excited to continue working on this. This is all I had time for this time, so tune back in next time when I'm going to really be using the knitting machine to create the overdress for my gown. <laughs> Thank you so much for spending your time with me. If you're interested in following along with this, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you again really, really soon. Bye!